Today, I want to talk about investing when you're a teenager, and I'm gonna discuss two topics that I would have loved to know if I was kind of shooting this video for myself. So this video is kind of a blast to the past. If I have children or something like that, that they can watch it and learn from my mistakes. And these are the two things I'll be covering, which is the first one, building skills and how to do it to get to the first 100K and what your mindset should be doing it. And the second thing, which everybody talks about is compounding, but then exactly how to compound and what to compound in and how to use money to get to the first 100K by the time you're in your 20s. So strap in and let's dive straight into it. Number one, which is the whole skill set. If you're a teenager like me, uh, when I was 13, I got my first job. So the first thing that I could tell you is if you want to become wealthy and you want to become a millionaire or you want to have passive income and live the life that you want, then my first advice to you is make sure that your skill level gets boosted in your early stages. What does that mean? First of all, you need to discover what you're passionate about. And how do you discover that? By doing a lot of different jobs. Just like me, I signed up for my first job when I was 13 years old. Just sign up for a ton of jobs, cutting lawns, tutoring, if you're really good with books and studying, maybe uh, go deeper into tutoring, maybe SAT prep, that kind of stuff. Just make sure to learn new things that you can then monetize. And you can monetize everything. If you're great at sales, that's probably gonna be a skill that you want to further develop. How do you know if you're great at it? you have to try. And so in the beginning, sign up for most of the jobs that you find that give you some glimmer of interest. And as you build up experience, you will build up your skill set. Another thing that I recommend as you're building your skill set is you're gonna have to do other stuff that other people don't tell you, which is play video games, uh, play chess, anything that can f maybe play music, anything that can further your mental capacity, which will be a huge win in your 20s, you will have to learn in your teenage years when you don't have bills weighing down uh, or any other adult stuff happening to you. So again, you're, on the one side, you have your skill levels in the workplace. You need to, if you find some interest, build up that interest and try literally 10 different things, hobbies, whatever. And whatever you're doing, try to monetize it already. Get a job, tutoring, like I said. But then on the other side, the other thing that nobody told me and nobody kind of says on YouTube either is, how about you also start building your mental capacity? by playing these things that you know people say are only reserved for people who like studying and, and geeks and stuff like that you're actually just handicapping yourself i know a lot of people that have adhd and stuff like that and had trouble going through school because it wasn't so interesting but yet they were great at sales starting their own businesses and stuff like that but all of them in their 20s started reading books or audiobooks or learning in some capacity because they found something that they were interested in and such Suddenly learning, because ADHD gives you hyper focus as well, suddenly learning became not a chore, but like a thing that they love to do. And I would say most of them, if not all of them, regret that they didn't study more when they were in their high school years. The question is, of course, what do you study? And that's why you have to do so many things. So as you're building what everybody talks about, and you can watch so many YouTube videos on this, whichever skill set, sales, accountancy, uh, you know, building businesses, whatever, getting a job, 10 different jobs, doesn't matter. The thing you should also be focusing on is maybe reading audiobooks if you don't like reading, reading if you like reading, uh, getting hobbies that could be monetizable down the line, uh, hobbies like chess that increase your mental capacity, anything, uh, and playing music which will help with hand-eye coordination and again developing your brain. These are all things that will become so extremely relevant as you enter into your 20s and now you have a good skill set that is monetizable and you have the mental capacity to either decide to get a job and start a side hustle or a business on the side or just start with your business on the side the whole as a full-timer because that's something you can still do in your 20s. 
So as you've developed these skills in your teenage years, the second thing I wanted to discuss is the compounding benefits. So as you make money, let's say again, you chose tutoring or maybe you're playing chess or maybe you're playing music and suddenly you decided to tutor music uh, or tutor chess, which again, it's not extremely lucrative, but it definitely will get you some money. So what do you do with that? The number one advice that I tend to hear a lot is you take your money, you put it into an S&P 500, and then you're kind of done with it because if you invest in your 20s or in your teenage years, then you know, 50, 60 years from now, you're gonna be a millionaire. And that's true. But one of the things that I regret the most is that I didn't invest enough into my skill set. And of course, as I started generating money and I would have more savings, I would invest more and more and more. But I feel like my growth would have been cut in half if I had invested faster into developing certain skills and developing certain networks. So as you get more money, one of the things that you can invest in is to make sure that you go either to a good networking place, maybe you are a very good student, so try to save up to uh, pay for a good college or university. Or maybe you don't have to go to an expensive college, maybe you can take side courses in the same region and network with the same people. Maybe you can uh, join incubators, boot camps that teach you how to start a business in a certain area and you use that money to get into those networks. I usually pay for retreats, business retreats, uh, or getting into a course that has a, an active community with a great mentor. And I just keep building that up. And then you don't have to loan money from anybody. Uh, because you never know if you invest into a course that it actually turns out really bad. And so as you have money, you use it to get more skills. And then as you get more skills, you will be earning more money. And as at one point you, you have kind of enough network, that network will also compound. They will grow and become more successful. They will know other people, get you in touch with those other people. So as your money compounds, your network compounds as well. And that's something that a lot of people don't talk about. As your network compounds, kind of by definition, things will start to become easier. Doors will open that have not been opened before. And so compounding has, of course, the, the cliche thing that you can put some money into an S&P 500 and then become a millionaire, but it can also give you a ton of successful friends that will become important as you become successful and you struggle with obstacles that 90% of people don't struggle with. You're gonna have to deal with these obstacles that you don't find on YouTube or on Google. You're gonna have to ask people and it's gonna cost a lot of money if you ask them. But if in the beginning you invested into great networks and building great skills, you're not gonna have to pay these people because these people are gonna be your friends. And then they will rise and they will lift you. And as you rise, you will lift others and it will compound into an amazing networking event. Um, and so as you compound your network, you will, of course, at one point, let's say cross $10,000. Now, most courses that will be worth your while in this stage will probably not co cost more than $10,000. So if you have that amount of money, at this point, you're gonna probably want to start investing. But what did we just learn? The compounding effect of network. So if you have successful people around you, they will probably struggle with similar things. They have some money in their savings account, they don't know what to do with it. So you just call some people up and then you ask the five most successful people that you have in your network and how they did it. And then based on that, you'll be able to decide what the best decision is. And I can tell you that for me, an S&P 500 is probably not really that interesting. Yes, there's some money in there, but one of the things that I heard as I was talking uh, with actually a successful YouTuber, he explained to me that uh, he uses his money and he looks at it as a concept of can this money get me a 10% annual yield, which is every year he'll get 10% more on his money than what he invested. If it does, it's interesting. And one of the things he started realizing is that an S&P 500, it gets you between five and 8%, depending on how, like if there's a war or something or not, right? Sometimes it goes above, but you never know. Whereas if you grow a good business and you hire a great employee, hopefully that employee will get you way more than 10% return on your investment. So suddenly you're kind of playing something different where your money can get you access to a much 
bigger investment pool where your annual yield exceeds 10%. And so in the beginning, when you have liquidity, that's usually where your liquidity, so the cash that you have on your savings account, that's usually where it would go. It would not go into an S&P 500. So those are kind of some ideas that will get you going. This is mostly ideas that will get you going in your teenage years. But just remember, on the one side, the two, the two skills that you will need to have. Like I said, on the one side, you have um, the skills that you need to build. These skills will get you access to a lot of communities. For instance, have you ever wanted to hang out with YouTubers that are like have millions of subscribers? If you start in your teenage years, by the time you're in your 20s, you're probably going to get really close to that. And then success will follow. Have you ever been really good at playing chess? And then in your teenage years, you invest all your t time into that. So suddenly, you become a grandmaster and you'll fly all over the world and hang out with people doing playing chess and start coaching and tutoring people and that launch courses i've seen literally like people make hundreds of thousands of dollars just doing that chess.com makes millions so there's like a lot of potential in this skill bracket and then as you start growing and let's say you make up to i would say under ten thousand dollars just keep investing in yourself and don't don't really like look at that you need to build up your skills to know how to make more than that uh, and then once you get above that, you need to start looking now, where can I spend this? Is there anywhere where I can take, let's say $5,000 and maybe invest into a freelancer that can help me out and open up some time for me so I can invest more time into the things that make me more money, that kind of stuff. So remember those two things, skills and compounding effect, and then take it from there.